The final thing we're going to cover in your basic home screen and the basic pages that you use all the time is your section control buttons. So up here you'll see each of these sort of little uh, oval shapes represents a row unit on the planter. These top two buttons have arrows right and left and they have an X. Obviously that means as you press this, you're going to turn off a row and down here there's no X, it means you turn that row back on. Since we only have one row and we're going to turn off rows from the left moving to the right, press this, now our row is gone. We press this, the row comes back. This would only be used when you're running in manual section control. There's many scenarios where that may or may not happen. That's something we can cover on a case by case basis, but just to, just so that we understand what these buttons do. Since we only have one row, well, this button here will also turn off that individual row and this will turn it back on. If you had all these rows active, as you go like this, they would start shutting off from the right to left. And when we go like this, they would turn back on from left to right and vice versa for the other button. The last thing I'm going to say about our main screen here is getting back to this power button. Right now it's full on gray and when you touch it, you turn the planter on. When you touch it again, you turn it off. But if this black becomes grayed out, like you see this one is, that means you can't do it. It's grayed out. You cannot operate it manually. That tells you that your, your GPS has taken over turning your planter on and off. All of these buttons at the top will also be grayed out and you cannot operate your section control manually and you can either turn the planter on and off manually. You're going to be running in that mode probably 98% of the time. Again, if there's other scenarios, we can go off a case by case basis. Here we are back on the Maestro homepage. We're going to arrow over two times. We're going to see a wrench. This is our machine data screens. Tap that once and immediately you're in crop type. This, as you can see, is in red. That is where we change what crop we're planting. That's really the only piece of information on this page that's important. Delta step is a case by case basis. We'll explain that another time. Here you can choose which crop you're planting. This is important because this tells the planter which disc is in and how many holes it has. Very important. So just to refresh, we're in the wrench first page. This is where you would change your crop. As you can see in our machine data screen, we have an arrow, which means we can go to a second page. When we tap on that, we go to machine data page number two, and here it says simulated speed off and simulated speed of five miles per hour. In certain circumstances, when you're doing testing on your planter, you can simulate a speed which allow your fertilizer and your seed meters to run for testing purposes without the tractor having to move. All right, so that's a machine data page number two. Also on page two is your alarm delay and your volume. This is also important because horn delay is set at two seconds right now, which means if you're outside of parameters, any of the parameters for more than two seconds, you will get an alarm. A lot of times, we want this to be much longer. We might go as high as 30 seconds in some cases. So now as your crop parameters vary, as they do in the field, you have to be outside of your parameters for at least 30 seconds in one go before your alarm will go. As long as they come back within the parameters, even briefly within 30 seconds, your alarms will not chirp at you. Machine data page one. Here you can see a head of wheat. This is also an important page. When we tap on the head of wheat, it brings up our crop parameters. We talked about how the alarms are gonna go off if you're outside of parameters. Here are some of the parameters that you can set, all right? For example, here we see a red number, 108. That number will be populated by the crop that you select in one of those earlier pages that we talked about. For canola, it will automatically choose 108 holes per disc. So now the planter ECU thinks that every time that disc spins one revolution, it's dropping 108 seeds. It's very important that this number here matches the number of actual holes on the physical disc. So just by changing this, you haven't done anything on the meter. It's very important. And it will ask you when you change this number to verify that you have the right disc in the meter to match this number here. Your grains per acre minimum and your grains per acre maximum is set at 15%. That means that if your target is, let's say 30,000, and it varies up or down by 15%, you're gonna get an alarm. It'll say 
high population or low population. You can increase this number to let's say 40%, not that you need to do that. Now you would not get an alarm until you're out of the parameters by 40%. The final parameter in this screen that we're gonna talk about is your vacuum fan inches per vacuum. So it's actually measuring the vacuum in inches of mercury. Here our minimum is eight and our maximum is 18. Well, if you're doing corn, you might go as high as, let's say, 32 inches of vacuum, which means we would be out of parameters all the time in this configuration, which means our alarms would be going constantly. So what we might do here is if we're going to set our inches of vacuum at 32 in corn, we're going to set our parameters at 36 because it's always going to vary up and down a little bit. Now, keep in mind, with this set as low as 8, we will not get an alarm until our inches have dropped below 8, and so we have to remember whenever we change our alarm parameters, we're going to get fewer alarms and it may not alert us to a problem as quickly. So just something to keep in mind. All right, so here we are back on the home screen. Now we're going to go into configuration pages. So you start off by hitting the wrench to go into machine data. Then we go into what we call our spider gears. It looks like two little spiders. Nothing happens when you tap it, but when you tap and hold for five seconds, it will take you into your configuration pages. There we go. Page number one, you don't have to do anything here. What it's doing is it's telling you that you're running a maestro. Now you can see that the, the words are red, which means you can change them, but in this page, you will never change anything. Important to know. All right, configuration page number two. Uh, again, there's only a couple things in here you may need to work with. In fact, probably only the one. JD split screen is something that will allow you to run your maestro through the John Deere Isobus system. It's, it's probably the only true ISOBUS system out there, which is why it's programmed right into the ECU. When you turn this to yes, and again, it's red, which allows you to change it. We're not going to change it right now. As simple as that. Now you can run through your John Deere ISOBUS. Now this is something that's important because if you're running a split row planter, either a 3115 or a 4715, sometimes the temptation for a guy is to come in here and change his number of rows when he's changing, when he's uh, splitting. This is not where you do it. Very important that that number, say for example, on a 31 row planter will always read 31, whether you're on 15 inch spacing or 30 inch spacing. If you're on a 4715, it'll always say 47. It always goes to the maximum number of rows and it stays there. It's very important to know. Row shutdown here is set at one row. The only time you would change this is, let's say, for example, you're running an older John Deere 2630 monitor. A 2630 does not have the computing power to run 31 sections. It maxes out at 16. So if you take a, let's say, a 24-row planter, it's got 24 sections. It can't handle 24 sections, so you might have to change this to two sections. And now, on a 24-row planter divided by two, you've only got 12 sections. The 2630 can handle that. The newer John Deere monitors, whether that's a 4600 or a 4640, can handle individual rows, so then you can go back down to one. In one case where I was working with a Case Pro 700 monitor, we had to set that to six sections or six row sections. It couldn't handle it. That's about the only thing you would ever do on this screen, depending on if you're running a different older ISOBUS monitor. From configuration page three, we arrow over to configuration page number four, and this is where you would turn on your variable rate if you're doing that. All that does is turn on your prescription. Configuration page five is section reduction. Page five, you won't use machine geometry. Here we're set to zeros, but your machine geometry is set from the factory in the ECU. You don't need to change anything here, even if you change tractors, because this geometry is all from the hitch pin back. There's nothing related to the tractor or the GPS bubble on the monitor. You never change anything on this screen. Now, configuration page number seven is an important one, because sometimes if there's a GPS issue, you're going to have trouble bringing the speed into your monitor. The speed controls everything controls your auto section control, it controls when your rows turn on and off, and it controls your population. Right now, your miles per hour or your speed is pulled from the planter radars. That's why it says pulses. If you switch this, and you can choose tractor radar, tractor wheel, or the J1939 
the GPS. This is what you use when you are running the GPS auto control or auto section control system. That is the only one that you use for auto section control. Pulses is only used when you're running off of Maestro's radars for speed and tractor wheel, even though it says tractor radar, tractor wheel is actually pulling the speed off of the tractor's radar GPS. Ideally, you would always be running off of your GPS speed because that is the one thing that'll be consistent between the tractor and the planter. With wheel slippage, if your tractor is, let's say, thinks it's going six miles per hour, but it's only going 5.8, the planter will also think it's going six because that's the readout and the population would be off a little bit. Whereas your GPS speed is the true speed. All right, from configuration page seven, we arrow over and we're back on configuration page number one. So there are several important functions in these pages. You're not gonna spend a lot of time here, but it's important to know how to get in here so that, um, especially when we're troubleshooting over the phone with something, we can be talking the same language. From here, we arrow back to our main screen or back into the machine data. And then from here, we can press the home button and we're back on the home screen. Okay, so here we are back on our main screen and now we're just gonna briefly touch on our diagnostics screen. Here's a stethoscope. Doctor, we have a stethoscope to diagnose you. This is diagnostics. Tap on the stethoscope. You'll see a master switch, a row computer button and a total count. This is an important one because if you start at the beginning of the season, you wanna know how many acres you did. This is a number that can never be changed. Everything's blue and this stays with the, with the planter for the life of the planter. 30 years from now, this number is locked in. It's counting your thousand grains per planter, the area that you planted, the distance that you've traveled, the time that the ECU has been turned on. So this, this screen is like the odometer on your car. You can't change it. If you ever trade off a planter, this is where you go to know what your acres are. If you're buying a planter, this is where you go to know how many acres are on that planter. So this is basically the only thing that you need to go into diagnostics for. Some of these other things are some really deep level troubleshooting stuff that uh, you shouldn't get into unless you're dealing with a technician. Here we are back on our home screen and you see what looks like a disc with an arrow over the top indicating that disc is turning and an A for amp. This is your amperage page. And what this does is it gives you a readout per row live as you're planting. And what you can do here again is Patterns always tell the story. If you see one of these spiking and the rest are low, you can see it goes from zero to four. This should really theoretically be somewhere around here. You know, here's one. It's the bottom quarter of this bar is where your reading should be 98.9% .9 of the time. You'll get the odd spike here and there, but if you see one row that's quite high, it's indicating uh, an, a higher amperage draw which means there's extra drag in that meter. So here's where you can tell if maybe you need to clean out a meter because there's extra debris in there that's causing drag. Or maybe there's been some, sometimes with sunflowers when they get broken off into holes and they're dragging along. But here's where you can tell if you've got uh, a higher amperage draw on a particular row, time to go out and check things. And sometimes it's just, uh, it just happens with a row. You, there's a shim kit. You can add a shim to pull the disc away from the housing just to reduce the drag a little bit, different things like that. But again, by knowing how to get into here, you can track, you can track that pattern and determine if something's going on. Thanks for watching the video. Thanks for spending some time with us today. And these videos are just a stepping stone to proper operation of the planner. Of course, you can contact us at Gen Ag, any one of us sales guys at any time to take it to the next step.